welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you the beginning of a very large project that is probably going to take me from now until the end of winter, and that is this. An Edwardian winter outfit perfect for taking a walk in the snow. So let's get started. So as you may or may not know, um, I have a rather large fabric stash, and to celebrate one full year of my YouTube channel, I wanted to go through my entire fabric stash and just kind of see what I had. And it ended up being kind of taking inventory of my whole stash. So I had numbers, and I had a spreadsheet, and I had different types of fabrics, and I got to look at everything and measure out how much fabric I had for every single item. and. I came across these wools that I had that I, I knew that I had, but I wasn't sure how much I had of them. And when I saw that I had a decent amount, I got quite excited. And the other thing that led to me coming up with this design was I desperately wanted to make myself another corset. Now as you may recall, I have the champagne corset, but that was like the first one that I made, so there were a lot of problems with it. And the second corset I made was the 1860s pink corset, which I absolutely loved, but it was not for me. So I uh, really wanted to make another corset for myself, but I didn't really know what to make at the time because the 1860s corset has, while it's kind of a classic shape, it's definitely not a time period that I can foresee myself making a lot of things for. So making myself an 1860s corset felt kind of not helpful because <laughs> so, I wouldn't have anything to wear over it that would fit that time period. But my all-time favorite time period for fashion is the Edwardian period where you have the Gibson girl look, you have the S-bend or straight front corset, and I just love that silhouette at that time period which you could probably tell by the chemise that I made as well as the blouse and the hat. Um, so I really love this time period and I didn't have the right corset to wear underneath. So I thought, okay, maybe I can make myself a kind of circa 1903, 1904 time period corset. And that's what I decided to do. But if I was going to make a corset, maybe I should make a few more things to wear on top of it. Because while the floral blouse ended up working, um, it doesn't go with a lot of things, and I didn't want to just make another black skirt, but I wanted to do something with like a lot of fabrics in my stash. And since it is autumn, I thought having something wintry would work great because then I could use all of the beautiful wools that I have, as well as me just loving winter. So I came up with this design, which has this beautiful uh, pink and gray wool for the skirt, and then a solid dark pinkish purple for the cape, as well as a vest and a corset. And I think I'll probably be making it hat as well as a blouse, and probably a corset cover, and probably a petticoat. So I am making all of the things. I think the only thing in this outfit that I'm not planning on making are the chemise, which I have already made, and the shoes, which I am very much dreaming of getting someday from America Duchess, but that will probably not come anytime soon. Um, so, you know, meh, whatever. But yeah, I decided to do a cape specifically because I don't really like sleeves, and this would be relatively easy and super wearable. I am going to be kind of working from the inside out, so since I already have the chemise, the next layer would logically be the corset. And I wanted to have a really beautiful, dramatic, straight front or S-bend corset. And I found this lovely blog post that actually gave a pattern for this straight front corset. And I could see down below how it ended up looking and everything. So that's what I decided to do. So the first thing I did after enlarging the pattern was to make a mock-up. And this is one half of it. it kind of goes like this. And I just made it out of this nice uh, blue cotton fabric that I'm almost out of. And it fit okay. 
I could lace it closed, but because I didn't really have a lot of bones in it, it kind of crumpled in the back. And I could tell that the hips were way too big and the bust was way too big and the waist was a little bit small. And that's partially because that is the silhouette of the time. And I struggled for a little bit trying to figure out, should I cut up the hips of the corset? Because with the 1860s pink corset, I actually added a couple of layers of padding to the hips, which helps them lay really flat and evenly, and it looked gorgeous. So I was thinking maybe I should do that, but then I realized that I needed to add like four or five inches, which is a bit more than just a little bit of padding would do. So I was initially trying to figure out, okay, how can I change the shape of the lining? Am I gonna have to add like a bottom to it to have this whole pad on the side? And then I watched a Nicole Rudolph video and I realized that at this time period, people often wore detachable hip pads under their corset, which I was like, yes, of course, I knew that. I, I could see that in my brain and I just didn't think to actually do it. And I was actually planning on making the hip pad next month when I make a bunch of other white frilly things. And, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do that first. And I did. I went in a single day from having just a picture of a pattern to a finished hip pad complete with cabbage padding and boning, lacing in the front, all that stuff. And it makes a huge difference. You can actually see right here, it's currently on my dress form. You can see it uh, adds quite a bit of booty uh, to this dress, which I think is great. And I, I love having this dress to show off and have on my dress form. Um, so yeah, that worked perfectly, and it was an amazingly fast process too. I think I got it done in like seven hours or something like that. And when I was done making the hip pad, I tried it on underneath the mock-up, and the hips fit so much better. I could instantly see that really iconic S-bend shape. So I struggled a bit trying to figure out how much boning I should add, because the pattern laid out specifically where the bones were supposed to go in the back, but not on the front panels. And unfortunately, it looked like a lot of the boning on the front panels was actually supposed to go through some of the panels. So if this is the corset, you can see all these different really dramatic curved panels. And one of them, for example, would go from the center of the front down to over here, and it would cross over this one and this one. And I just, I didn't really like that idea. So, I decided that I was going to attempt to not bone this corset much at all except for the back. And I think it worked out pretty well. I'm not quite done with the corset as of filming this section, but you can see it holds its shape. Like, look at this versus this. There's That's a big difference between these two. So I think that it's going to be just fine. And part of the reason why this is uh, so nice and sturdy is because I actually added a layer of what I'm guessing is polyester felt. It was in my stash, so I didn't quite know what it was or where it came from, but it works really well for keeping this thing quite stiff. And the, this one has one bone in the back and then the busk in the front. And uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty sturdy. So I think combining that with the French seams that I have in the front here, it's gonna stand up decently well on its own. Once I had decided on my plan, I layered the cotton over the felt, I drew out all of my pattern pieces, and I attached those so that I could kind of treat those as one layer. Then I added the busk, which is a relatively simple process once you figure it out. And then I started adding in these other panels going from the side. And it worked pretty well up until number three and then it started getting tricky because I have this combined seam and I think I actually ended up breaking a sewing machine needle on that which was a little unfortunate so I switched it over to a heavy duty needle so hopefully that should uh, get me through okay then I realized that I had placed one of the uh, number four panels to the wrong side oh no labeled and everything. On every one of these panels I have a label that says one down, two down, three down, or up. 
based on which direction I had the pattern flipped. And I don't know how I made that mistake, but that was a bit heartbreaking. Thankfully, um, I was able to rescue it. I'm not sure how I managed to do that, but I just seam picked it and put it back together and it somehow managed to work. And then once I added on panels five and six, I held it up to myself and realized that it feels kind of small. You can see it's just, it doesn't quite reach as far as I'd like it to. So I'm a little bit worried about that, but I'm hoping that all I would have left to do is to add the grommets and then the hip panel, which is right here. I decided that since the last time I used this fabric, I did white with the pink. This time I wanted to do black because that seems, you know, fancy and kind of autumn-ish. So I have this beautiful black lace that was in my stash and I have a layer of that over pink satin and I have some felt on this as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with how this corset has gone so far, and I think it should be not too terribly hard to finish. Sorry there's no grand cinematic reveal for this one, but as you can tell, I was getting right up to the end of the deadline in order to be able to uh, film and edit this and get it ready to go. So next month I'm going to be attacking some white frilly things, including a petticoat and a corset cover, and probably a white blouse. This time I want to try the pattern from the Keystone Guide, it's more of an 1890s pattern, but honestly blouses don't change all that much between these decades. A little bit, but not too bad. So yeah, that is my goal for next month, a bunch of cute little white frilly things, and then we're going to be starting on the wool skirt. So I am super excited to see how this project goes. I am absolutely in love with the design. So yeah, let me know what you think down below and I will see you next time. Bye.